And now. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining me today. I am workshop number nine today here at the Ed Collab Gathering, talking about digital badges and micro credentialing success for teachers. I am Laura Fleming, and I am here today with the Educator Collaborative, but I am also the Library Media Specialist at New Milford High School. I'm on Twitter at NMHS underscore LMS. And I welcome all of you to live tweet as I present my session today at hashtag the Ed Collab Gathering space, that space is really important, number nine. You can use my Twitter handle along with that hashtag and I'm going to try to respond to questions here today. But if not, I'll be happy to continue this conversation on Twitter. So give me a second and I want to. Stop sharing my slides and see all of you. Hi, everybody. So we're going to start off by talking about what we know about badges already. We've seen them in a lot of places. They have a long history. In fact, I think most of us, if we dig through our containers in our attic or our basement, we have some kind of badge stored somewhere. In fact, just five minutes ago, I was up in my attic digging out my grandmother's old crossing guard badge. Um, so we've seen badges in a ton of places. I think we've all seen law enforcement badges that tell us the law enforcement um, person's rank. We've seen scouting badges. I think most of us were Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts. And something I love about scouting badges is that they have over 130 merit badges that they can earn. And they actually pick badges in areas that are interesting to them and fulfill those requirements in order to earn their badges. I just love that idea. We've seen military badges. Here I have a bunch of different military badges that tell us what military division a person is in. We've even seen badges in the digital space, particularly in relation to gaming. Here I have a screenshot from a Major League Baseball um, video game. And badges are used in this game, but really only as a way to motivate and to recognize achievement and establish credibility. Badges have a long, rich history. I actually trace them all the way back to the Middle Ages myself. So I want to share my screen again with all of you and talk a little bit about how badges have changed today. So we're living in a time where content is ubiquitous. Learning today can happen anytime and anywhere, on the job, in the community, or even online. The world is your platform is a phrase that I often use. I have a professional interest in leveraging the power of multiple platforms to reach and engage all learners in this digital age. And that means teachers as learners. As Hi, everyone. We seem to be having a moment of a technology.
I apologize, everybody. Um, we have lost Laura for a minute, so I'm going to try to bring her back in to the conversation, and we'll be back with you in just a moment. Hi, everybody. Um, I just wanted to give you an update that we've got things almost back up and running, and we will be live in about two minutes. Hi, everybody. It looks like Laura will be joining us, and we are going to switch right back over into the presentation. 
Here we go. Hi, Laura. Hi again. Hi, everybody. I have no idea what happens. Don't you just love technology? Anyway, I'm happy to be back with you. And I believe the last thing everybody heard before the Hangout dropped for me was the hashtag for the event. So I'm going to go right into talking about badges. Um, and I just quickly want to start off with what we all probably know about badges already. We've seen them in a ton of places. They have a really, really long history. Um, we've seen badges that tell law enforcement and rank of people. In fact, just a couple of minutes before I started presenting today, I was up in my attic digging for my grandmother's old law enforcement badge, and I found it. And I think that if we all look in our attics or basements, we have some kind of badge. Um, I don't know about all of you, but I used to be a Girl Scout for a short period of time. Um, and something that I really love actually about scouting badges is that they have 130 different merit badges that they can earn. Um, scouts actually pick badges in areas of things that are interesting to them and fulfill the requirements for that badge in order to earn them. I just love that idea. We've seen military badges that tell us what division um, a military person is in. We've even seen badges. Here I have a little um, screenshot of um, a video game. We've seen badges in the digital space, but really just as a way to motivate behavior or recognize achievement. Badges have a long, rich history. In fact, in my research, I was able to trace them all the way back to um, the Middle Ages, actually. And it's possible that they even go back further than that. So I'm going to take a minute just to share my screen with all of you now. Let's hope this works. Fingers crossed. Um, we live in a time now where content is ubiquitous. Learning can happen anytime and anywhere, on the job, in the community, or even online. The world is your platform is a phrase that I often use. I myself have a professional interest in leveraging the power of multiple platforms to reach and engage all learners in this digital age. And that includes teachers as learners as well. So education and the workplace is changing. So how do we recognize and value the way that we learn today? How do we capture and communicate that knowledge? Associated with digital badges is this idea of micro-credentialing. Micro-credentialing is granting credits for learning drawn from a wide variety of sources. Some schools have already started using digital badges to connect in school and out of school learning and to promote more innovative, engaged learning, recognizing granular skills that students get outside of school. For example, students might earn a community service badge or earn one for completing a challenge at a local museum. So this right here is the official definition of a badge. It's basically a visual representation of a skill or achievement. And now the nuance is that it's an online rep representation of a skill or achievement. So unlike the Boy Scout sashes that get tossed in the old box in your attic, digital badges you acquire stay with you. So why digital badges? Digital badges can be used to guide, motivate, validate informal learning and formal learning. They can be earned anytime. They can be earned anywhere. They can be used to build and communicate reputation, capturing a whole complete picture of an individual. So who can issue a digital badge? Badges can actually be created by anyone. They can be defined by and issued by a broad range of sources. So this includes both formal and informal educational institutions. It can be after school programs, groups focusing on professional development, and anyone can earn a badge if they want to. So how do you earn a badge? Badges can be earned for doing something. But the key is they, can, they need to be earned by evidencing what you did to earn that badge. We'll talk about that more in a little bit. And to be earned, your evidence is assessed. 
So what can you do with earned badges? You've earned one, and now what? You can share earned badges on websites. They can be embedded in your websites. They can be embedded in your blogs. They can be shared across social media platforms and networks. They can be put into portfolios or resumes. And we're even starting to see them being used as a part of the college admission process, which is super exciting. So we're going to take a minute. I'm going to share my screen with you again. And again, fingers crossed that this works for me. So we're going to take a minute to hear from some stakeholders in this area because I think a lot can be gained from their insights. It's one thing for me to tell you that digital badges are important in this digital age, um, but I think hearing from these stakeholders will really hit home. So the first is President Bill Clinton, who says for a person to remain competitive in today's workforce, there must be continual learning. But traditional assessment tools are narrow in scope and often aren't able to communicate everything a person knows or has achieved in order to capture the many and often informal ways that students and workers acquire knowledge and skills and to enable institutions to recognize their accomplishments, we must embrace a more modern and comprehensive credentialing system. So here we have Arne Duncan, who basically says that badges can help engage students in learning and broaden the avenues for learners of all ages to acquire and demonstrate, as well as document and display their skills. And then finally, we have Connie Yell out of the MacArthur Foundation, who says open badges provide an alternative and more in-depth method for students and workers to demonstrate their knowledge and skills. So this is what is called the open badge anatomy. To be credible, Digital badges must include information about when and how they were earned and who issued them. They should be stackable to demonstrate multiple achievements, and the earners should be free to share them with a variety of audiences. They provide a digital hyperlink to information about the badge's associated skills and the projects or tasks the badge holder has completed to earn it. So this is something known as an open badge standard. It's basically a set of data, a set of metadata behind each badge. So that can include things like issuer information, earner information, the criteria for earning the badge, you can even attach the evidence to the badge. What did that person do in order to earn that badge? You can even align your badges to the standards. So last year, what I decided to do was to apply these principles of digital badging to creating a digital badge-based professional learning platform called Worlds of Learning at New Milford High School. This is basically an informal learning platform where teachers can learn, experiment, grow, and be challenged. Prior to this, um, we, we basically have known professional development as being um, you know, a workshop kind of setting where teachers listen to a presenter, they watch their watches or the clock on the wall, some grade papers, some daydream, some play on their phones, and others participate actively. So the key to this is personalizing our professional development. Our teachers through this platform can pick and choose what they want to learn, and really chart the course for their own professional learning. Their skill mastery is acknowledged with a digital badge and through this digital badging system. Teachers are recognized for granular skills they acquire during the school year 
by completing tasks outlined on the platform. Registered users can learn what they want to learn when they want to learn it. It's really a sustained professional learning initiative that ensures that teachers don't get credit for seat time, but rather it is an outcome or evidence-based system. And we all know that as far as professional development is concerned, there is a need for widespread systemic change. And I really feel like we've done that with this platform. This platform prepares educators to fully leverage the, the potential, excuse me, for mastering digital age skills that we see in the ISTE standards for teachers, as well as the seamless integration of technology the Common Core calls for. So this is the way that it works. Teachers who visit our platform, teachers who visit Worlds of Learning at New Milford High School, first register or log in. They then can choose from a library of badges. By clicking on those badges or after clicking on those badges, they then read the task. What do they have to do to earn that badge? Then at that point, they actually leave the, the platform and they go into their classrooms. And their job is to integrate that tool that they've learned about on the platform into their instruction. After doing that, they come back to the platform and they submit their evidence for doing so. And their evidence can be a URL link to something that they or their students have created online in regards to the badge that they're trying to earn. It can be a lesson plan. It can be sometimes um, a text description of the activity that they've done. The type of evidence varies. And upon having that evidence reviewed, our teachers then earn a badge. And then at that point, they have the option of showcasing their achievement, using that badge for whatever purpose they want. They can embed it in their blogs, they can share it um, on Twitter with their colleagues. Um, they can really do with their badge whatever they choose to do at that point. So by flipping our professional learning, my teachers at my school also receive job embedded coaching and they are supported by face-to-face -face personalized support by me or through me. I'm available to collaborate with teachers on implementing these tools into their instruction as well as offering both face-to-face -face and virtual support and sometimes just plain old encouragement. This platform was not designed to be used as a formal evaluation tool. Instead, the purpose of this platform is to track, share, celebrate, and be given credit for informal learning. So although our digital platform is an informal learning platform, Many people, many teachers who are participating have chosen to use the badges in formal ways, such as uploading them as artifacts to our teacher evaluation system. This has really helped give our badges currency, and that's such an important piece of the badging puzzle. People want to have a reason or have to have a reason to want to earn a badge. You need to make sure that you give your badges currency. And for a lot of our teachers, using them as artifacts in our teacher evaluation system has done just that. So right here is a snapshot of what is called a digital backpack. And this is a digital backpack on a website called Credly, which is integrated directly with our digital badge platform. And every teacher who participates in our platform has their own digital backpack on Credly. So every time they earn a badge, it automatically gets uploaded to Credly. And at this point, anybody can click on their badge badges and they can see how that person earned the badge, when they earned that badge, what did they have to do to earn that badge. In some cases, they can even see the evidence associated with earning that badge. So through this digital backpack, badges stay with the earner. And really their digital backpack 
tells the story of their entire professional learning throughout their entire career. And then from here, the beauty of these digital backpacks is that teachers have the option or students have the option of just by clicking on the badge, sharing them across social media networks. They can um, receive embed code to be able to embed these into their websites or blogs. You can even upload them to LinkedIn if you choose to do so. So something that was really super, super exciting and surprising, and thanks really to the power of social media, was that upon launching our Digital Badge Professional Learning Platform, I received inquiries from people all over the world who wanted a similar type of platform for their teachers, or they wanted to create their own digital badging system um, for students, and they just really didn't know how to get started. So if you go onto my blog, I have a blog post called Giving It All Away. And in that blog post, I explain that I'm happy to send to anybody who's interested a bundled copy of my files, which serve as sort of a template to get you started if you're interested in creating your own digital badging platform. Now, I should tell you that you really need to be proficient or somewhat proficient in WordPress to get started with this. Um, but if you are and you're interested, I definitely encourage you to visit my blog, which is at world-of-learning.com, and do a search for the post called Giving It All Away, and my contact information is right in that post. And upon receiving an email from you, I'd be happy to send you my files as well, if anybody should be interested. So something that I think is really, really important to talk about in relation to any type of badging system that you might want to start yourselves or at your own schools is what's called a credible digital badge ecosystem. And there are three components of a digital badge ecosystem, or I should say of a credible digital badge ecosystem, because that's really our point. We don't just want to create any old digital badge system. We want one that's credible and one, one that's sustainable. So there are three key components. The first are the badge issuers. So those are really individuals, schools, employers, institutions, communities, or groups that create credentials to demonstrate the mastery of skills or achievements. The next component of a digital badge ecosystem are the badge earners. Those are individuals who want to demonstrate their achievements to various audiences. And that's that whole currency piece that you need to build in when you're talking about digital badging. What can you do to make your badge earners want to earn your digital badges? To offer badges is one thing, but you have to make people want to earn them. So those are the badge earners who want to demonstrate their achievements um, to various audiences through digital badging. And the final component of a credible digital badge ecosystem are the badge consumers. And this is really a super, super important piece. So these are the education providers, such as individuals, employers, communities, colleges, administrators, or any other type of group that are looking for people who possess the skills or achievements symbolized by a badge. So here I am again. So the question really is, what do digital badges mean for learning? Whether we're talking about students or whether we're talking about teachers and their own professional learning. So really, digital badges are flexible enough to be able to recognize granular skills. So things that standardized assessments typically don't address. So soft skills, such as cooperation or collaboration 
or any type of informal learning. For example, my makerspace at New Milford High School, students gain amazing skills in that space, but it's an informal learning space space. So digital badges provide an opportunity for me to be able to recognize the skills that students gain in that space. So we're talking about digital badges having really the power to recognize granular skills that one acquires, as well as capturing an individual's entire learning instead of just formalized pieces of their learning. Digital badges allow learners to take control of their learning. They can learn what they want to learn, they can pick and choose a personalized path for themselves, and they can decide when they want to learn it, when they want to fulfill the requirements for those badges. So digital badges are a way to recognize soft skills like leadership and collaboration, Badges point, paint, excuse me, a more meaningful picture of what a student knows beyond just a test score or a letter grade, or in the case of teachers, beyond just traditional professional development opportunities. So thank you everybody for joining me today. I do have some time. If there are any questions, I'm happy to take them. Um, if not, please definitely reach out to me on Twitter. Again, I am at NMHS underscore LMS. And you can also put the hashtag, the Ed Collab Gathering space, don't forget that space, um, number nine. Um, and I know there's a lot to think about in regards to di digital badging. So if anything comes to mind, please reach out to me at any point in time. Um, before I leave you today, I do have a few questions. Um, the first is, was it difficult to make the transition to badging in your school? Um, and what about the buy-in? Again, that's that whole currency piece. Um, it's important to find a way to make your badge earners want to earn badges. So in the case of my school, um, I didn't find it difficult to make the transition to badging because what I found was that we had so many teachers on our staff who just learned for the sake of learning. So at nighttime, they're on their couch, they're learning a new Web 2.0 tool, and they really seemed to feel grateful that there was now a system that would capture some of that knowledge that they gained outside of the hours of the school day um, and outside of our traditional professional development time. Um, at the same time, I think because um, the platform flipped our professional development, teachers were also really grateful that they could learn on their own time. So they didn't have to find a way to squeeze this into the school day. They didn't have to go to another workshop that took up their own time. They could do this whenever the time was convenient for them. Um, even in the middle of the night, some teachers had done it when they couldn't sleep. Um, a few teachers had told me. So I think they appreciated being able to um, learn on their own time. Um, and also, they felt empowered to be able to create a path for their own professional learning. They were able to choose um, which badges they were interested in learning and which badges applied directly to their content area or to their um, instruction. So I think that they appreciated that as well. And I also think because um, a lot of the learning takes place online, the teachers who were not so proficient with technology, and some of them were actually downright afraid of technology, felt like they had a safe place to go where they could experiment, they could fail, um, they could learn at their own pace. Um, and they also felt comforted that they had me there to support them as they tried to integrate these tools into their instruction. Um, so I don't think it was difficult to make the transition. You know, it's all kind of very organic as well. We, we had a few teachers who were champions, digital badge champions, and because of that, other teachers started to buy in, and it sort of um, spread very organically. Um, it even turned into a little bit of a competition. We had teachers um, hanging up their badges, actually printing out their digital badges and hanging up the papers outside of their classroom. Um, and even, you know, we had some friendly 
um, exchanges on Twitter about who had the most badges and you know it was really all in fun um, but it was all very motivating and inspiring um, and really turned our professional development into something that teachers enjoyed and felt empowered by. I have another question. How did I learn about digital badging? Well, um, at the time, I was researching digital badging um, before I launched this platform, and I really wanted to develop some sort of digital badging for our students, particularly in relation to something like digital citizenship, which is something that is very important, as we all know, but isn't traditionally assessed um, on their report cards in any kind of way. Um, but you know, as I started researching digital badging more and more, I realized that um, this concept was so new to so many teachers, especially at my building, that any student digital badging initiative I tried to launch at the time, I think would have fallen flat because our teachers really didn't know what digital badges were. So I really felt like it was important for them to um, go through the process of earning digital badges themselves to then be able to successfully turnkey um, this type of thing over to their students or onto their students. Um, so really the whole idea was professional development embedded within professional development. I was sort of teaching them about digital badges while they were earning digital badges themselves. So that's kind of how I got started with it all. Is there a place um, you go to learn more about the process in addition to your site? Well, I'm a big fan of all that Mozilla has done in this space and their open badging initiative. I definitely recommend um, going to their site. In fact, I will tweet you a direct link of where you can go to their site to learn more about digital badges. And as you read and learn about digital badges on their site, you actually have the opportunity to earn a digital badge on their site. And once you earn that digital badge, you can then upload it into a digital backpack and you can get started and be on your way with digital badging. There are definitely other places that teachers and students can earn badges besides my platform. I definitely encourage all of you to join my platform. I have teachers all over the country Country who participate actually all over the world at this point so I definitely encourage anybody listening um, to join our platform as well um, but if you go on to Mozilla's site their, their badging site you'll see an actual list of other organizations that also issue digital badges and open badges that you and your students can have the opportunity to earn if you you don't have your own digital um, badging initiative in place yourself any other questions? I don't think I see any. So I just want to thank everybody for being here with me today. I hope that you have um, gained something from this session and see the value of digital badging um, in this day and age. So thank you, everybody. Remember, if you have any questions, definitely reach out to me on Twitter. I am at NMHS underscore LMS. Thank you, everybody.